Okay. So the problem then is if you're going to be doing your duty for the state, that's boring, that's tedious, all the words you want to throw into there, a waste of time, expensive, expensive. And what do you get for it? Social status maybe, but boy, is that really worth it? Well, how do you account for this being a choice that enables people to reach eudaimonia, flourish, personal flourishing, right? Well, part of the answer is your mental attitude towards it. So if you read their advice, right, their advice is basically telling you not to let things bother you, right? You reach what they call a stoic attitude towards things, right? And in a sense, what you're doing is retreating into your self mentally so that you can be at a boring meeting and not letting it get to you, right? You're instead focused on what keeps you calm, that's all. Another, another interesting example that I've had the occasion to use myself, right? is driving down the Glen Highway, and you're paying uh, attention to the road, and you're driving the speed limit, and you're being safe, and so on. And some character comes zooming along, uh, usually in a large truck, uh, and cuts you off, right? And you know the immediate reaction that you might have to that is an adrenaline rush that says, I'm going to go and cut him off, right? Get even. Well, but that's not very safe. So what do you do in order to kind of change that feeling of anger that you're suddenly faced with? Well, humor. I use humor a lot. You know, I, and, and plus, I feel like, well, that idiot is going to end up in a ditch, you know, probably three miles down the road because of the way he's driving, right? You know, uh, or Another way is to simply say, I'm being safe. You know, I'm going to get where I'm going instead of wanting to show off on the road and things of that sort. Right? I, I have my priorities straight. That person clearly doesn't. Right? Um, you, know, you tell yourself things in order to reward yourself for good behavior. <laughs> if you think of it this way. You know, and, you know, kind of put that other person in a category that says, you know, he's not worth worrying about. Or maybe in a few years he'll learn, you know, that he shouldn't drive like that and so on, right? You know, maybe that's, you know, uh, thank goodness it's not one of my girls, you know, driving like that. Or my son, I hope, right, you know, driving like that, uh, et cetera. Sorry if I sound like I have a sexist attitude towards good and bad driving, you know, that's, sorry, you know, it's just true, you know, but, um, oh, so a stoic attitude, another ex gr brilliant example of a stoic attitude is Viktor Frankl, you ever heard of him? Yes? 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 I thought you were going to do who? Victor Frankenstein. Victor Frankenstein? Yeah. Young Frankenstein? Yeah. My, what? Knockers. Yeah, that. Oh, that's Frankenstein's one. first name, right? Is it Victor? It could be. It's Victor. Google it. <laughs> well, I, you know, that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we might actually look him up because if I, I reference Hannah Arendt, I, I, can, men, I, I can mention Hannah Arendt, um, but interview. This is uh, Viktor Frankl. I'll, I'll explain Viktor Frankl was... What is the difference between people who are able to pick themselves up in a 